Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. So, God's goal is not for believers to always have prayer requests. There is always something we live in the world of men. Are we together? But that you get to a point where your growth can afford you to see the faithfulness of God in such a way and a manner that you can find rest roundabout. That your desire becomes concerning the issues of others. It becomes an intercessory desire rather than you still contending to have results yourself. Do you believe that? It means a time should come as proof that you are growing, that in all honesty, you should search and not even know anything to write again for yourself because God would have so sorted you, not necessarily by asking individually, but that you grew to a point where there was no need for those requests again. Your growth could now purchase higher spiritual realities. Are we together? Yes. Something happens to believers when they grow. Something happens to believers when they increase in wisdom, when they increase in stature, when they increase in favor with God and with men. I was almost tempted to sample four people, you know, tonight before beginning my discussion and just to ask them quite honestly, not to embarrass them. My intention initially was to ask the individuals, tell me what you want God to do in this miracle service for you and feel free, don't be embarrassed. You would be amazed that many people's request is growth dependent. That means as sincere as they are desiring God to answer, his love for them would not allow some of those requests to be answered. Are we together? Because God is not just interested in meeting your needs. He's interested in you experiencing his glory and then becoming a manifestation of that glory. So in order of spiritual priority, God's highest joy is not to see that your needs are met. His greatest joy is to see that you become an experience of his glory, a manifestation of his glory in experience. It's impossible to be a manifestation of God's glory in experience and be found wanting in so many areas as captured by your prayer request. Now, there's nothing wrong with your prayer request, but I'm challenging you that there is a more excellent way for the believer that you get to a point where God would have so sorted you by his faithfulness and in honor to your growth that when it's time to write requests, you will have to be calling people. I'm going to church. What would you want the Lord to do for you? It becomes an intercessory prayer request because as for you, you have gained mastery in the spirit. You have gotten to a point where you have laid hold on eternal life, the Bible says. Are we together? You have given diligence to make your calling and your election sure. So while you contend to have your various requests answered, it's important you have it at the back of your mind that God's best for me is not just ticking my answers month in, month out. Are we together? That kind of epileptic victory is not the believer's destiny. The Bible says, now thanks be to God, which causes us always, always, always to triumph. Always to triumph. I needed to say this because, you see, as a man of God, your greatest desire over your people is to consistently measure their growth. Are we together? That, and you measure their growth using many indices. When I was a child, I understood like a child. I spoke like a child. I taught like a child. So these are the biblical indices. So as I speak to you, I can measure your growth. Your words tell me how much you know God and how much you have grown. Your thought pattern. It tells how much the word has prevailed over your mind, prevailed over your thinking. Are we together? The way you understand, which translates to the way you behave. My pride as a man of God over anyone God has put under my care. It's not just that you have 
once in a while testimonies but that you lay hold on eternal life you have attained unto a state of mastery in the spirit so that you would know what spiritual laws are connected to what outcomes i hope you understand what i'm saying now so you are not hoping to come for a miracle service for your finance to be sorted for your prayer life to be sorted for favor to speak no is that you have laid you have found the keys when favor is deficient in your life by knowledge you know what to engage you can literally with the intelligence of a consultant you can diagnose another believers deficiency in light of what you know and then be able to provide solution so if someone comes to you and says um, you know I'm having all kinds of attacks in my life you don't just say hey yeah this attack is everywhere or you are not the only one you are even lucky that you are alive that is not a mature believers communication that kind of communication does not defend the word you have received are we together on hearing such a thing several scriptures and several mysteries and several principles should just go around your spirit that you can draw from them and say my brother without sounding arrogant i have the answer to your problem he says saviors shall come out of zion are we together now yes that when people see you, they become happy as though they have seen God because you have become a worthy ambassador. That every time you show up in the life of people, in the life of families, your stability is based on knowledge. You don't join people to be at a loss as to what to do. Someone tells you, for instance, all doors are closed towards me. One sermon already begins to ring in your spirit. And you can literally draw forth the principles and say, my friend, if doors are not open, I can tell you what is wrong. Number one, doors open by the use of the correct keys, not the use of keys, the use of the correct keys. You are either holding the wrong key or you are standing before the wrong door. And you can tell the other person doors open because of relationships. When you knock, the person at the back end must be willing to open that door. You have helped that person with precision. Another person comes to you and say, I've been plagued by the spirit of death. All kinds of dreams. You don't look at the person and say, let's pray. From a faithless standpoint, not even believing what you are saying. I hope God is challenging you. And so the average believer will say something like, let's pray. Father, Lord, God Almighty, and whatever it is you have to say, we thank you for this day, this man's problem. You are the only one who can solve it. I pray that you solve the person's problem. Let him not die in Jesus' name. That looks very spiritual. But that is not a, a, a worthy representation of the kingdom. Death does not just happen. As haphazard as it looks, there are laws that sponsor death and there are laws that prohibit death. Are we together? Death is not just a phenomenon. Listen, death is also a spirit. The rider upon the fourth horse, holding a pair of balances. His name is death. Power was given to him to kill. So you can tell the person, listen, the Bible says death, life and death is in the power of the tongue are we together now yes that i shall not die but live and declare the works of the lord and you don't just believe it mechanically it's going to be a product of deep meditation backed up by obedience many of the things that bring believers to a service such as this i repeat again for your learning depends not just on the prophetic decrees of the man of God it depends on their willingness to grow if you do not grow it will look like God is not faithful in your life regardless the kind of prayer regardless the kind of prophetic words you may even receive temporal results but because the knowledge bank to sustain it is not there is the reason why Satan is not afraid of certain believers receiving do you know why? Because it's like pouring water in a basket. He's not afraid. Let the prophetic word follow you. You will have the breakthrough, but it means nothing because in the presence of ignorance, ignorance is like a child holding something and an adult wanting it. There's nothing the child can do about it. The adult will just pick it helplessly. That's how many believers are. 
So the devil is not really concerned whether you receive anything from God. The sower sowed the seed, the word. Satan was not afraid. Listen, there's no record in scripture that Satan fears the word of God. No. There is no record I know in scripture that the devil is afraid of the word of God. Satan is afraid of what happens when the believer engages the word because it is at the point of engaging the word that God's power is released to perform. Not the arrival of the word. They heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. Are we together now? Yes. I'm saying this because it's important. I'll be running through a few things as a charge for us tonight. But this was my contemplation and the Holy Spirit just breathed this reality. And I thought to myself how true this statement is. If I ask you to bring me a sample of the things you have written now, as well intentioned as those lists are, you will find out that if God is a faithful God, some of those prayers should not be answered. Because that version of you, it will not be a blessing if it is answered. In fact, some of the prayer requests are only a testament of your understanding of God. Because what you are writing as the problem may not be the problem. For instance, if in your prayer request you wrote, Father, grant Uncle Sam, grant Uncle Joshua Selman to pay my school fees by force. Just an example. Now, you will submit it and just because I'm laying hands on it does not mean God is committed indefinitely. No. He looks at you the way a father looks like a child and his mercy overrides your ignorance and limitation, hoping that you will learn. But in God's ideal template, no. The moment you tie God to a man, you have shown that he's not powerful enough. No. You cannot say God tied it. No, 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 no. God does not work like that. He says, Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Nothing is too difficult for you. So by the time your faith is tied to a man, it's auxiliary faith. It's not authentic Bible faith. God will use men, but you don't choose the men he will use. Are you learning? God will always use men, but you will not choose the men that he will use. So you can see, I'm just showing you an example that so many believers write all kinds of things and just because you drop it in the basket, you are hoping that it will be ticked and you find out that out of the 10 prayer requests, seven of them are products of ignorance. So God just comes by his mercy and just helps you. Hmm. Are we learning? Many of our answers are growth dependent. Many results in your life, I tell you sincerely, will depend on growth, not desire. Desire is important, a fair starting point, but to the believer, commanding victory in experience, commanding total and wholesome victory is not a product of sentiments, it's a product of growth. The Bible says an heir, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1, for as long as that heir is a child, he says he differed nothing from a servant or a slave, even though in his destiny he's Lord of all. Give us NIV and see what NIV says concerning this scripture. Can you give us NIV? What I am saying is that as long as an heir is a child, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. So you remain at the realm of potentials when you are a child, seeing what God can do, but never stepping into the experience of it. Seeing that he can heal, that he can lift, that he can bless, that he can advance, that he can prosper, that he can rewrite stories. Let me tell you the truth. Your Christian experience becomes frustrating when you are aware of what God can do and yet you do not grow to a point where you step into that experience. Hallelujah. Are we learning? 
Now, I wrote something down here and I want to run a very interesting list for you. Please listen very carefully. You desire to enjoy and maximize what God has in store for you here at this miracle service. Then I want you to listen because this is really where the miracle starts. Are we together? I wrote a few things here. I call them enemies of advancement, enemies of triumph, enemies of liberty, enemies of joy, enemies of rest. They are enemies. The enemies, the real enemies. I want to show you now that when you talk about an enemy, it means one who is opposed to your advancement opposed to your moving forward you will be learning now that satan is only one of these enemies it's amazing that the average believer's scope of understanding is that the only principal enemy to your becoming to your receiving to your imagining is satan and that should satan be taken out of the way all your problems will miraculously and for some thinking magically be solved it doesn't work that way I assure you, if Satan is bound today and all the demons on earth are bound today, there are still believers who will fail. That is when you will know that Satan is an important factor as far as opposing the believers concerned, but not the only factor. And Satan likes it when believers magnify him beyond his proportion. Are we together now? So the centrality of the non-informed believers thinking is that Satan is the ultimate and the principal reason as to why my liberty, my advancement, my becoming, my imagine, my becoming joyful is limited or prohibited. I'm here to prove to you tonight that it's not true. Satan is a significant factor. The Bible tells us to not be unaware of his devices. But one of his major devices is to magnify himself to a point where um believers and unbelievers alike look at him as the singular principal reason to everything that is not god in your life it is not true it is not true it is not true so i call them here enemies of advancement also enemies of triumph also enemies of liberty also enemies of joy in fact enemies of rest as I run through this list, it's a charge. I need to put your heart in this understanding so that you will appreciate everything the Spirit of God is going to be doing in this place. And so that your attention will not just be when I begin to minister to people, whether prophetically or just praying for the sick. You will be learning for someone as you hear me run this list. God is going to pin one or two and tell you this is the real demon to defeat out of your life. And then you will walk in the experience of liberty. Are you prepared? Number one. The first enemy to a man's advancement is ignorance. Write this down please. Complete ignorance. This kingdom like you have learned. Is knowledge dependent. The manifestation of the God life. Walking in the experience of the Zoe life. Is highly knowledge dependent. Acts 19 and verse 2. Let's walk very quickly media. Acts 19 and verse 2. This is Paul now. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him in response, We have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. A man can be this ignorant. A man can be this ignorant that you have not even heard that God can lift. You will be amazed that many bodies of spiritual truth that you take for granted here, there can be many believers who are saved but have not even heard that the Holy Ghost can assist men. Not even heard that prayer produces power. Not even heard, are we together now, that giving is connected to increase. Not even heard, verse 2, same scripture. We have not even heard. Go back to verse 2 and leave it at verse 2, please. We have not so much as heard. He asked them a simple question. In addition to your believing, have you received the Holy Ghost? And they said, we don't even know what you are saying. We are believers. Being mentored by someone. They were victims of the limitation of the knowledge of whoever was teaching them. They were disciples. But they said, we have not even heard. 
Ignorance is dangerous. It can alienate men from the potential of the life of God. Ephesians 4.18 Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. The first enemy to any man's destiny any man's advancement, any man's walking in triumph, any man's experiencing liberty is ignorance. In Luke chapter 19, 41 down to 44, Luke chapter 19, the second reason why Jesus wept in scripture, there are two reasons why Jesus wept at least as revealed in scripture. Number one was at the grave of Lazarus, he wept because he loved him, they said. The second reason was Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. And here's what he said, that he beheld the city and he wept over it. Reading to 44. And he said this, next verse please. If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto your peace, the things which lead to the experience of your peace. He says, but now they are hid from your eyes. 43. For the day shall come upon thee, and thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side. I like 44. Here's what it says. And shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave thee in one stone upon another, because thou knew not the time of thy visitation. Ignorance in all its ramification puts the believer at a point of disadvantage. Can I give you the second? The second enemy to a man's advancement perhaps might be a, the reason why you have written a request, where you have come desiring a touch from God. Limiting beliefs. A faulty mentality. The second enemy. Limiting beliefs. A faulty mentality is not ignorance is the wrong information, inaccurate information, incomplete information, limiting beliefs. You have learned here and it bears repeating that mentality defines destiny and it does so by determining the kinds of choices and decisions that you make. Mentality in truth defines destiny. The quality of a man's destiny is determined not just by the will of God, not just by the love of God. In spite of God's predeterminate counsel as revealed in scripture, a man's destiny in experience will in large proportions be a product of the quality or otherwise of his thinking. Limiting beliefs, faulty mentality. Number three. The third enemy to advancement, the third enemy to liberty, the third enemy to stepping into the experience of rest is called procrastination. This one hit me seriously. I had to repent before God myself. Indecision slash procrastination. It occurred to me again how devilish this tool can be in the hand of Satan. Procrastination. It impacted me so much, I had to take a moment to define this. And I want you to listen to my definition. Here's what procrastination means. The act of putting off or delaying something requiring prompt action, despite knowing that there will be negative consequences, often because it is stressful, unpleasant, or boring. Listen before you write. That procrastination is defined as the act of putting off completely or delaying something that requires prompt action despite knowing that there will be negative consequences often because it is stressful, often because it is unpleasant or uncomfortable, often because it is boring procrastination the devil and the cancer that has destroyed great destinies that even if satan were not on earth the fact that time is on earth many believers many leaders would still be failures for this singular factor procrastination can we examine a few scriptures 
Proverbs 20 and verse 4. 20 and verse 4. Proverbs. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg in harvest and want nothing. Who is the sluggard? The one who is slack. Not apt to take in action. It's too cold. I can't come out. Flimsy excuses. Proverbs 18 and verse 9. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 9. God is helping someone. It says, he also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. Him also that is slothful in his work, listen now, is brother to him that is a great waster. Nobody likes waste. No organization likes waste. Not even God. Are we together now? The story of gathering the crumbs that made up 12 baskets is proof that God hates waste. And yet the Bible says a man that procrastinates, being slothful, giving excuses, is friend and brother to him that is a great waster. Psalm 119 and verse 60. Many people procrastinate even as touching the word of God. I found this scripture and it blessed me so much. Let's read together. One to read. I made haste and delayed not to keep your commandments. One more time. I made haste and delayed not to keep your commandments. There are consequences. Delayed obedience, they say, is disobedience in a measure. When God commanded Abraham, my Bible says in Genesis 22 that Abraham rose up early. He rose up early. Timing. He rose up early. Procrastination. Are you ready for number four? I'm giving you the real enemies so that when we are praying and asking God to obtain grace and triumph over the enemies of our advancement your mind does not just think deliverance from spirits alone you would have robbed yourself of an opportunity to be truly free ignorance limiting beliefs or a faulty mentality procrastination or indecision number four inaction inaction the laxity to move. This is not procrastination. You know what to do. The matching order is already there. But laziness, that inertia. In action. Proverbs 14, 23. Someone is being delivered from this now. Shout a believing amen. amen. In all labor, there is profit. In all labor, there is profit. In all labor, look at this scripture carefully, there is profit, but the talk of the lips tended only to penury. In Africa, we call it making mouth. That the one who is busy talking things and the one who bends down to get the things done. You imagine two people, one person carrying the hoe or the farming utensils and his seed, laboring in the farm, plowing the land, and another person who is speaking and saying, you know, this soil is not really loamy soil. Are you aware of that? At the end of it, the Bible says, the man who is just talking, empty talk, without work, like James admonished us, that that person will tend to penury. He's not just speaking in terms of finances alone, that he will always be in insufficiency and want. The person who is just talking about prayer and the one actually praying, it is the one actually praying who have the profit from prayer. Are we together? The person talking about obedience and the one who is actually doing the obedience. The profit is in the doing, the labor to do, not just the labor to know, not just the labor to speak. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Now that ye know these things, knowledge becomes profitable when it partners with action. Inaction. Inaction. How many people would have gotten jobs today, but not just because of procrastination, inaction. 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 Five. Is someone learning? The fifth enemy to your advancement, your triumph, your liberty, your rest is called lack of strategies. 
This one is a very powerful one. Lack of strategies. Another word, inefficiency. Lack of strategies. This one concerns many leaders. They know what to do. Prophecy is already there. The vision is already there. But I have told you it is prophecy plus strategy that equals manifestation. Is vision plus strategy that equals manifestation. I don't care what God told you, quite honestly. I don't care what the blueprint you have for your future. It will never come to pass until you press to receive in addition to that vision, in addition to that prophetic word, the strategy allocated. Your real victory is not knowing that you will defeat Jericho. Your real victory is receiving the strategy on how to bring Jericho down. Your real victory is not crossing the Red Sea or moving to the other side. It's knowing how you are going to maneuver your way from the other end of the Red Sea to the other end of the Red Sea. Walking on water is an option. Parting the Red Sea is an option. Using a boat is an option. They are all options. So you have to stay with God. Every prophetic word requires a strategy. Every vision requires a strategy. Every season requires a strategy. All strategies do not work on all visions. No, sir. The engine, for instance, of a Toyota car, as well built as it is, may not fit a Mercedes Benz. That does not mean there's anything wrong with that engine. The nature of the configuration. And if you have to force a Toyota engine to work, say, for instance, in a Mercedes, you will have to cut too many things, adjust too many things, and manage that experience for the rest of your life or your driving experience. Many people are not able to excel because they have not stayed with God. You know what God has told you you will become, but has he told you how it will happen? No wonder Mary kept the angel and said, don't go. How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? How, don't just tell me it will happen. How shall these things be? Luke 1, 34, she asked him, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? I, the natural way of having a child is a man and his wife. Now you are telling me I'm not yet married to Joseph. And you are telling me I'm going to be with child, albeit without the direct assistance of a man. So explain to me what other strategy is there. I'm not aware. And the answer came in verse 35. Hallelujah. Give it to us verse 35. The angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost. Do you know this is a powerful revelation? That means, just help those under the anointing. Listen, it means everything that is natural has a spiritual dimension to it that God can reroute the same thing. When God puts principles, it's not because he's limited. It's to create order. When situations call for change, he can circumvent those things. The normal course is for Mary and Joseph to birth a child but he's saying listen you have been taught that it is Mary and Joseph that equals a baby however there is still another technology in the spirit when the Holy Ghost comes he can do something that gives you the result don't be surprised when you see Mary pregnant and you can't find Joseph it is not always disobedience is that the Holy Ghost has come to supplement I know that that promotion should come after 10 years that is the principle. But don't be surprised when a 10-year-old harvest comes to a man in one day. It is not unusual. When the Holy Ghost comes, he can rewrite things. I know that the angel comes to steer the water once a year. If you miss that moment until next year, but not when Jesus comes. When he comes, he can redefine the seasons. It's true. How shall these things be? I do not know a man. However, he says, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Hmm. Do you believe this?
lack of strategy. This is where the deficiency of wisdom punishes a lot of people. Please listen to me. There are many things you are writing right now. What you need is not prophecy on it. What you need is the strategy. How many of you know that the oil in the house of the wife of the sons of the prophet, there was already capacity. Isn't it amazing that the things we look outside are already in our house? It's only that you have not been told what to do with the oil. For some of you, God brought you here not necessarily to give you oil. He came to tell you that what you have in your house, your house can be your mind. Your house can be your destiny. Your house can literally be your house. Your house can mean your company. The body of friends around you. The solution is already there. You just need to be told how to make the oil multiply. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, impossible becomes possible when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you hold my hands i agree that when you have an infirmity the medical approach is to put you under a knife and to carefully walk through your veins and your arteries, cutting out the tumor, cutting out whatever. That is a valid pathway. There are results to show. However, do not forget that the Holy Ghost can also rest upon men and produce the same result. Mary's story is not about giving birth to Jesus. It's about possibilities beyond the realm of science. Possibilities beyond the normal course of things. That means whilst you are seated trusting God for a miracle, it is true that you may need 10 million, 15 million for whatever, maybe kidney transplant or whatever. I agree. God gave the doctors the wisdom. However, when you see the Holy Ghost resting on people, make sure you cry that he will come upon you too because he can make that experience equal to a surgery. Only that this one does not need anesthesia, does not need time. You don't need to be under a knife. God for you. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, impossible becomes possible. You can get a job, an excellent way of sojourning financially and receive X amount every month. You can stand with your two years wages, a product of diligence, a product of savings. However, you can stand on this other side because life treated you unfairly and the God of favor and mercy comes. The Holy Ghost can breathe upon you and that you will stand with someone and you are still holding two years wages too except that you don't have a job except that you are not two years it looks unfair i'm saying that anything the holy ghost does in the life of the saints is correct even if it does not look unfair even if it does not look fair it is correct so when you see mary pregnant and you don't see joseph don't criticize her find out who else came upon her When you see a man who may not have the kind of intelligence and yet you see God increasing them. Don't just say, ah, this, how did this happen? When the Holy Ghost comes upon men, the stories can be rewritten. When you see the man at Bethesda rising and it's not the season for the angel to come, don't think it was some way Jesus came. It's not his fault. Jesus came to him. When Jesus comes, he does not wait for seasons. His coming defines your season. Do you believe this? Listen, the, one of the greatest secrets I have learned about destiny actualization is to receive the strategies that make prophecies come to pass. 
If the only thing you run with is prophecy, you will be disappointed. God can tell you, I'm going to raise you to be an anointed apostle, a prophet, a, an intercessor. That is vision, not strategy. If the strategy does not come, you will fail as if God did not speak to you. So Joshua said, come and give us a strategy. And he said, Joshua, I know you worked with Moses for many years. You saw him manifest different strategies. You use any of those strategies for Jericho, you will fail. Here is your strategy. Once every day, go round. Once. And then by the, the seventh day, gather all the trumpeters and the singers. Go round seven times. And at the seventh time, let there be a shout, the healer, and the walls will crumble. Very pointless strategy. And yet that was a strategy that brought Jericho down. Look at the strategy that today has brought the gospel to the nations. What is the strategy? Believing a report that Jesus is Savior, that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is King, that he loved you enough to die for you. As, as supposedly frail as that strategy is, this is what has turned ordinary men to champions. It is that strategy that turned Paul, Saul to Paul. It is that strategy that turned weak men. Hallelujah. <laughs> you are as powerful as the strategies that back you, not just the prophecy that backs you. You are as powerful as the strategies. For some of you, whilst this meeting is going on, I'm saying this so that you will know how God visits you. You may not fall and shout and do all of that, but a strategy comes to you. Pray every morning, 12 to 2. Do that for three months. I will speak to you. That's it. That is the strategy that will open the next phase of your ministry. It may not be applicable to everyone. It came to you as a rhema. You just do it. Are we together? I, I recall, I, I, I'm, I'm reminded about, you know, our story moving into Abuja here. I've said it many times, but for the sake of those who have not heard, I remember I started praying and the Holy Spirit asked me to buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the globe. Place it on the ground and keep praying. That was it. What sort of a foolish strategy is that? I'm saying, oh God, where is the venue? Where am I going to meet with the people? These crowds you are showing me in the vision, where will they be? Who is going to pay the bills first and foremost? Strategy. For someone, your strategy will be that when a shout comes, shout. The strategy will be dance away your problems before God. And it may not make sense. You see, that's why the Bible says the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. He cannot profit, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't follow the path of logic, spiritual things. Someone says strategy. This is a major reason why many destinies are kept. They lack strategies. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 10. 10 and verse 10. If the iron be blunt, he said, and he do not wet the edge, sharpen the edge, then must he put more strength, inefficiency, but wisdom is profitable in that it sustains the power to give you direction. Wisdom is profitable to direct. There is a way to do ministry such that you will win. There is a way to do ministry that you will be in pain and you will lose forever. There is a way to do business such that you become an indomitable winner. There is a way to do business that you become an apology to yourself and to others. Are we together? There is a way to raise children that you raise champions and giants. There is a way to raise children that cause you to go to your grave early. Have you obtained the strategy for your destiny? Lay your hands on your head in one minute and say, Father, reveal the strategy. The strategy for this prophetic word you have given me. Someone be serious. Reveal the strategy that you have allocated for the manifestation of your word in my life. You have said is our year of exceeding great rewards 
I receive the strategy by the power of God. There is a strategy that sustains the anointing that God placed upon your life. There is a strategy that sustains your relevance. There is a strategy that sustains everything God has given you. All the overflows inside, outside, connecting across the globe. Are you praying? I receive the strategy. Go ahead and pray. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Take a minute to pray. Strategies as powerful as prophecy. Strategies as powerful as vision. Strategies as powerful as prophecy. Don't tell me God said, receive the strategy on how it will happen. If God says, go forward, receive the strategy. Your victory is not just in the prophecy. Your victory is not just in being visionary. You must obtain the strategy. Receive, manifest His power, His wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up. Hallelujah. Please look up. Look up. From the jawbone of a donkey to the rod that parted the Red Sea to the worshippers leading the army in the days of Jehoshaphat to gathering them ten thousands and counseling them according to the advice of Jethro, Moses' father-in-law down to Jesus making the people to sit in fifties and hundreds and using five loaves and two fish from a young lad that Andrew brought, do you not see that the victory of believers all through the Bible is not just prophecy dependent, it is strategy dependent. God is speaking to a businessman. It is true God called you to that business, but you will keep failing until strategy comes. Strategy is like the battery that powers the clock of your destiny. Have you seen someone buy a new clock? new clock a wall clock and there's no battery there the clock has potentials and yet it cannot move it cannot work for someone you came for koinonia tonight not necessarily because you are sick in your body you're not trusting god for healing per se but is that your life you are you'll be marking time from january till now you need strategy when it's time to pray pray this with all your heart when God began to speak to us about carrying this apostolic fire to the nations, I went to God in prayer and I said, God, there has to be a strategy. These things need finances. These things need the participation of nations. You are stepping into nations with different policies, different biases. The world is no longer a safe place. It's not enough to just give a matching order. What is the strategy? Can I tell you, it's not God's responsibility to spoon feed you with the strategy. Strategy is a product of hunger. It is your hunger that drives you to stay and say, I will not move until it comes. I have received the prophetic word. I have re received the green light, but send me the strategy. God told Moses, go to Pharaoh and advocate the exodus of God's people. Moses said, mm -mm, not like that. I know Pharaoh. I know Egypt. I was born. I live there. What is the strategy? 
and he said take that rod now is the rod of God wherewith you will do wonders and Moses said that's fine let's go strategies who told you your business cannot rise who told you the reason you are suffering is just because rates are high while we sympathize with those things and we pray that things go down but it's not the truth that's not the reason there is a strategy behind the prophecy that you will be a house owner. If you don't get the strategy, the prophet, you, you will become mocked by that pro that, that. Moses, you are going to be a deliverer, but make sure the strategy is known. Moses did not know the strategy, so he killed an Egyptian by inventing his own strategy. He was a deliverer, but because he did not have a strategy, he took initiative and that cost him a lot. It is dangerous to use your own strategy to try to bring God's vision. Using your own strategy is another way of giving your hands to Satan and say, change my destiny. It's not only prophecy you should receive. Who is God speaking to today? I believe someone, you came to church tonight. This is your miracle service. You are a man of God, no doubt. His grace is on your life, no doubt. You copy blindly, you will suffer as if God did not call you. You have to stay. What is the strategy? There has to be a strategy for my joy, a strategy for my peace, a strategy for my rising, a strategy for my excelling. How am I supposed to live and work in this place? Nobody likes me in that office. Perhaps I'm the only believer. Ask Daniel. There was a strategy given to Daniel that made him to succeed in Babylon. Babylon was not his house. It was not a favorable place. It was a place of idolatry. And yet Daniel excelled. Don't say it's the job. It is the absence of strategy. I feel tempted to ask you one more time to cry. Lord, show me the strategy. What is the strategy for tomorrow? What is the strategy for doing ministry profitably such that God becomes glorified in and through my life? What is the strategy for doing business God's way? Now that you know to bribe and to steal and to be corrupt is not God's way. Have you received God's strategy? He made known his ways to Moses. Don't just celebrate prophecy. Don't just celebrate vision. You must stay to receive the strategy. One minute, you are praying. prandas kabarakatoshates. Shalem berekete prakatos kabres. Zabranda berekoska. Agrapete berekete berekete paskatiata. Go ahead and pray. Without a strategy, even though prophecy may be there, without a strategy, even though vision may be there, Victory may be far from you. Take a minute to pray. You are investing in your destiny. Let a man of God pray. Let a champion pray. Let one who is tired of his current location in life and destiny pray. Open my eyes, oh God. Let me see. Open my eyes, oh God. Let me see. The strategy that brings me to a wealthy place. The strategy that gives me rest round about. The strategy for increase in ministry. Rest round about. Send it, oh God, from heaven. Someone pray. There is a strategy. God will never give you an assignment without the strategy. You were not patient. You were not patient enough to stay till the strategy comes. In Jesus' name I pray. I'm pressing on this point because I know there is an anointing on it. As I came, I realized by the Spirit preaching that this is where the problem of many people is. That's why God is impressing on me. Stay here for a bit. Not many. It's easy to pray and minister healing. It's easy to pray and minister deliverance. But most people's problem is not lack of vision. They know what they want already. The strategy. There are things God told me. There are covenants I have with him. There are strategies I receive from him. And there is an oath over those strategies that it will never fail. Never fail. It's true. Do you know 
I remember one of the times I've not shared this when I was praying the overflows I didn't even know this auditorium didn't even know there would be space I know that I saw crowds of people and I was wondering where in Abuja will these people be where will they stay where how, how am I going to keep these people this is what I was seeing in my visions and I was wondering for God's sake where will these people be I just know that I was seeing this thing in my vision and God said you just stay with me get the map of Abuja the map of Nigeria the map of Africa the map of the globe lay your hands on it and pray every day that's it the foolishness of obedience can I tell you when you see believers look like they are signs and wonders it's not as if it is their making is the reason why we do not glorify self when these things happen we point people to that king eternal the one who is the only wise God it is out of his wisdom we have drawn let me tell you the truth be tired of where you are now and cry and say father the grace will not be shared tonight until the strategy that I need I remember crying to God in prayer what is the secret what really makes ministry work strategy <laughs> And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. Meditate on these things, he says. Give yourself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear unto all. That thy profiting may appear unto all. For someone after this miracle service, obtain grace to go for a retreat and don't come out of that retreat until you come up with a blueprint are we together i think it was john a. a allen he had cried and cried for the miracle working power of god and nothing happened he went to lock himself and he told his wife he said honey i'm not coming out of this place until god gives me the secret to a supernatural healing ministry and he locked himself and according to him there were seven things that were downloaded from heaven and that if he walked in keeping with those things he would have an excelling ministry and oh boy did he from nation to nation exceptional things for the kingdom I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ receive this as an impartation that before this service is over, an information, an idea, a strategy unique to you, unique to that which God has ordained for you, let it rest upon you. Let it rest upon you. When that strategy comes into your spirit, may it turn you to a sign and a wonder. May it turn you to an object of praise. Hear me? Every problem is as mighty as the absence of strategies when strategies come they deflate challenges spiritual challenges family life marital challenges financial challenges whatever it is don't ask if things can be done your prayer is lord download from heaven it can't be that my business you called me into this business you didn't send me to come to abuja and roam around I, you told me I'm a kingdom financier. It's been three years, all doors closed. There has to be a way. There has to be a way. There has to be a way. You told me I will feed my family. I will feed nations. I am here begging. Instead of getting angry and saying, God, all this week, <laughs> send me help from your sanctuary. Is that not in your Bible? Psalm 20 and verse 1. Give us verse 1 and 2. Let me even speak it as a prophetic word over someone. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. May he send you help tonight from this sanctuary. May he send you help tonight from this sanctuary. May he send you help tonight from this sanctuary.
in the name of Jesus. Oh, my help has come. Oh, my help has come. As the prophetic word God gave you, as the vision he put before you, alongside the strategy he gave you, it is that combination that produces victory. Let me give you the last one. Please sit. Please sit. Hmm. Someone is ready to testify. I know when something enters. I know when... I know when a spirit communication someone has really received something that you will go back home and even though there is nothing before you you begin to dance because the strategy has come God has shown me how to do ministry and win. God has shown me how to raise my children and win. God has shown me how to live in Abuja and win. In America and win. In UK and win. The way of the winner is the way of the spirit. The way of the winner is the way of the spirit. Did you hear what I said? Truly. Should I pursue? And he said, pursue, overtake, and without fail, recover. Strategies. Why are you crying unto me, Moses? Tell the people that they go forward. Stretch forth your rod and speak to the Red Sea. Cause it to part heater and teeter. And let the people walk on dry ground. Strategy. If it be thou, bid me come. Come. Strategy. How can you walk when you don't know the way of the way? Hey, how can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? How can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind? His power at work in you, changing everything. Recreating everything in obedience to Christ, rewriting everything in obedience to Christ, 
final enemy and then we'll pray the waters have been stirred in this place now well there are actually three more let me run through them I wouldn't explain number six exhaustion or weariness weariness is an enemy to destiny actualization Galatians 6 and verse 9 all men including believers can be weary and can be exhausted so the Bible says let us not be weary even in well-doing it leaves us with an assurance that for in due season we will reap condition if we faint not again if we faint not if you faint through weariness there is no harvest if you faint through weariness prophecy might be there but you may never enter the experience of it the sixth enemy to rest, victory, triumph, joy, is exhaustion. There are many people who have come here right now. You are fagged out, exhausted. The Bible says even the young men will be weary. Is that true? The youth will utterly fall. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew, 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 renew. The strength was once there, but it became depleted encountering the vicissitudes of life renew their strength they will mount up with wings as eagles they will run and not be weary they will walk and not faint weariness number seven what is the seventh enemy of advancement triumph liberty all of these things i'm listing will become your prayer points tonight over dependence on men over dependence on men this has packed many great prophetic destinies god will always use men but he does not mandate that you trust men no you trust in the lord he uses men as a vehicle god will ask you to believe men but to trust meaning to place your entire life the security of your life and destiny on a man no isaiah 31 and verse 3 the greatest of men and the greatest of human strategies are frail read with me one to read now the egyptians are men and not god as powerful as their horses are the horses are flesh they are not spirit when the lord shall stretch out his hand both he that helpeth and he that is helped shall all fall and they will be forgotten together if men walk is because God empowered them to produce did you hear that Egypt is not without the help of God the horses even the rider is only able to ride and move in speed because it is empowered by God over dependence on men God will always use men but allow him select the men he will use allow him you're a, you're a man of god here don't give yourself headache by tying yourself to say this person fund my ministry fund my crusade you that is a recipe for heart attack they looked unto him and their faces were lightened there is no shame when men look unto god god will use men to look down to them he says i have seen the affliction of my people by reason of their taskmasters and i am come down he came down through a man the man moses God always comes down to men through men but he does not 
mandates that men worship men two times in scripture that entities that were not God were prohibited from being worshipped. One, the king made a 90 feet stature and he paid dearly for it. Dearly for it. Dearly for it. Let me give you the last one very quickly. There's a lot to do tonight. Is someone learning? The eighth and final enemy of advancement, triumph, liberty, joy, rest. Direct demonic assaults. Can you see that this is only number eight? It is true that Satan, in addition to a very organized satanic structure, they can, they do, they always launch attacks and assaults on all men, but more importantly, the saints. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. First Peter 5 verse 8. Be sober, it says, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, your adversary, the devil, the devil is not a friend, the devil is not a counselor, the devil is not an ally. The Bible calls him your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That means when he finds you, he will devour you, for sure. He finds you, he will devour you. He finds you, he will devour you. Be sober, he says, be sensitive, be discerning, be vigilant because there is an enemy, there is an adversary around the corridors of your destiny. And he says you deal with him by putting on the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, brethren, it says, verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then he begins to list for you that you should put on the whole armor of God to the end that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the strategies of the devil. You stand against Satan not just by hating him. No, it's a waste to hate, him, to hate Satan. Doesn't make any difference. Hatred is not a weapon in the spirit. No. Hatred is a luggage, is a load, it's not a weapon. Doesn't fight anything, doesn't bring any victory. Maybe to hate on righteousness, yes. But for spirits, no. Hatred does not affect Satan. It is putting on the whole armor of God. And you have been taught here, times without number, there are many of them. The breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, your feet shod with the gospel, the preparation of the gospel of peace. Then he says, haven't done all to stand, to stand, to stand. Now listen to me. Your desires tonight, for those of us here, the many who are here, all the overflows outside, all our expressions across the globe and to us, many who are connecting right now. We're going to get into a moment of prayer and I'll be ministering to you, but have it at the back of your mind that it is not all about casting out demons. It is not all about ministering deliverance by separating you from spirits. That some of these things may be the enemies. This is the reason why we're going to start by praying. Prayer deals with some of these things. In the place of prayer, you obtain grace to be diligent, so you deal with ignorance. Are we together? In the place of prayer, you obtain grace to fight limiting beliefs, inaccurate or incomplete mindsets that keep making poor decisions out of your life, bringing poor outcomes to your destiny. How about procrastination? If I were you, I would pray that one with all my heart. If you are a sincere person, you would know that this would have affected you in one way or the other. Kairos moments that were missed because certain things I taught you, I've taught you here that destiny is a function of time and whatever takes from your time has taken a part of your destiny. How about inaction number four? The laxity to take action. That when God gives you the marching order, when he grants you grace, you must obtain grace to move. It says, by you, I run through a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. Five, lack of strategies. You've prayed it, but we'll still pray it again. Six, exhaustion. 
mental exhaustion, exhaustion from hoping, hoping that God will step in over your life, your family. The Bible says hope deferred can make the heart weary. Hope deferred. Seven, over dependence on men. You came here wanting to receive a prophecy, for instance, just connected to a man and you're not interested in God. Just tell me who is the person who is going to change my life. Call his name, give me his phone number perhaps. I'm not being sarcastic. I hope God has not disappointed you by saying don't harass anybody. Everybody has, even if God told you I'm to bless you, I can refuse. And God will respect my choice. If you trust him enough, you will use another person. If you don't trust him enough, you will be disappointed. Because you'll be saying, God, three weeks ago, you promised me that you'll wake apostle to help me. Till now, he has not. It's possible that I can refuse as an act of my will. God, I've had you, but I refuse. Will you risk your destiny because of the refusal of one man? That is a risk. Look unto him. If he wakes Mary and Mary refuses, there are other people. The most important thing is that somebody will arise and step in for your case, for your cause. You believe that? Say amen. amen. And then for direct demonic assaults, we are glad from scripture. I think it's 2 Corinthians 2, I think, and 14. Now thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Now thanks be to God. Yeah. 214 now thanks be to God which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place let me assure you by God if you found your way to this place know that you must carry a testimony back home I'm saying it only to a believer I'm saying it only to a receiver not to a hearer that if you found your way to this place or you are connected in the name of Jesus, you must carry a potent testimony tonight back home. You must carry a potent testimony tonight back home in the name of Jesus. Testimonies are real. Testimonies are real. They are manifestations of the hand of God, the visitations of God. By his word, through his spirit, in the life of his people. Are you ready for a change of story? You are going to cry. I will list out the prayer points and you will pray. It's part of the miracle service. So that where you have been found wanting, giving allowance to Satan, giving allowance to these enemies to stop you from going forward, you will deal with them in the place of prayer. After that, you are ready to receive. Hallelujah. The overflow outside. Three people will start running. Please let ushers hold them so they don't injure themselves. The overflow outside. I just saw this in my vision. Like the power of God will come upon three people. Literally, they will start running under the anointing. I want you to hold them so they don't injure themselves. In the name of Jesus, that grace is resting upon you. It's, it's, it's speed. God is bringing speed. Three people I'm seeing in my vision. Please just hold them. And whether you're an usher or not, there are so many people outside. Three people, let that grace rest upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. One of the balconies. The power of God is coming on a lady. Ah, 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 Adonai. Ah, 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 Adonai. Ah, The anointing of the Spirit is coming on a pastor. You are a man of God. You came here with hunger, fasting and praying. I'm seeing an anointing coming very strongly 
on a man of God. You are a man in ministry. It's a mighty anointing. You will not be the same. God is about satisfying you. You are about to contact a grace that will redefine your ministry. Redefine your ministry. You will step into a realm of strange signs and wonders by the Spirit. Are you ready to pray? Listen. When it's time to pray, I'd like you to pray with energy, with zeal, with seriousness. Are we together? I will pray for you, but it's after you have prayed. This is part of the miracle service. Don't keep quiet. When it's time to pray, you pray. What things soever ye desire, Mark eleven twenty four. When you pray, believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Shalina sobraske berintoski aparatoski vest. Kradila savelende. Shobrendes kaparuski atar. Say after me, Father. Come on, shout it like believers. Say, Father. Tonight, I decree and I declare that every hindrance to my progress to my advancement let it be destroyed now open your mouth and begin to pray every hindrance every hindrance God has spoken great things concerning you in Zion pray pray in the spirit pray in understanding by you I can run through a troop by my God, I can leap and I will leap over walls. Man of God, pray. It's a new season. Businessman, pray. Father, every enemy impeding my advancement to destiny, I come against such. Rata pares kote brenda ke brendi ke peleketos. Sabrenda ke berekata paros. Outside pray. All the overflows pray. My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in glory. He will put His angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for 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 me. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching